Uh, thanks for inviting me to have this interview. Thanks. And you know about Amsterdam now. You've been there. Yes, I do. I do. It's, it was great to uh, get a chance to connect with you, Dio. Uh, big shout outs to him who, who introduced to, uh, us to a bunch of people out there. And one of the main people, uh, he was saying, we have to meet. You're, he's like, yo, you got to meet Deems. Yo, he's like the maestro fresh west of Amsterdam. He's like the pioneer, the godfather, the man who holds this thing together. So got a chance to connect with you and, and found out just that you've been doing hip hop for, uh, for a long time now, even was living down in, uh, in New York. York, right? Working with a lot of uh, a lot of the top names down there, people like Big Daddy Kane, J. Rude the Damager, who we're gonna have also on this episode, and uh, and working with with my favorite producer ever, DJ Premier. Yeah, 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 yeah. And part of the uh, the foundation that was started, Gangstar Foundation, Gangstar foundation way back in uh, in in the early days when he was first starting out so that's that that was incredible to hear and then getting a chance to hear some of the stories that you had um with uh spending time with guru and stuff like that r.i.p to guru uh it, it was just incredible man so i definitely had to get you on the phone here and 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 talk some more shop talk some more hip-hop with you and you know find out a little bit more about what uh what got you really involved into the whole hip-hop culture in the first place I think the first album that really inspired me to get into hip hop was uh, Wild Style. Yeah, that was like the first album because they they also had like the documentary that came out or like the movie. I, I think it was, was like a movie slash documentary with um, Fat Five Freddy, and it just inspired me as soon as I seen that movie because it, it had all the elements in it: the, the graffiti, break dancing, uh, well. They called it b-boying back then, MCing. Everything was in it. So, um, yeah, Wild Style was the first. I think it's because of Wild Style that, that I really got into um, hip-hop. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, they had all the greats in that Grandmaster Flash, uh, the, the, the Cold Crush Brothers, Fat yeah, all Five the Freddy. Pioneers, all the pioneers. Yeah, all the pioneers. That's uh that's awesome. I I, I gotta get get it, get that in my hands and, and and take a look at it again. And the great thing about it was that a few years later, I was right there at the same spot because uh, I was invited by Africa Bombada to come to New York, so I had a chance to um to hang around at Bronx River Projects where they had the first block parties, uh, where I met Jesse J and that's where I also got um. That's why they also made me official member of the Sulu Nation. Wow, wow, that would have been an honor right there. Even just to get to get invited by somebody like Africa Mambata. If you don't know, uh, go and do your research on that. That's pioneer, like the beginning, the 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 one who who took it to to like the the masses and was able to really popularize hip hop and and get it out there. Yeah, he was he was one of the few that that changed the whole gang situation that they had back then into hip-hop yeah uh, he, he used to be in a gang called the black spades oh, okay so this this the whole hip-hop well part of hip-hop this started by all those gangs instead of fighting each other battling each other yeah turning it turning it into the into the microphone i was just listening to a a really good interview today by krs1 and he was uh he was just talking about how Africa Bambata would set up these meetings um, and get everybody, like all the leaders of, I guess, some of the gangs and stuff in there and, and the people in the hip-hop community, the DJs, the breakers, the writers, the MCs, everybody in, in one room together and would have meetings basically like uh, really spreading that message of peace, love, and unity in hip-hop and, and trying to get away from, from the violence and stuff like that. So, And he was yeah, really a part of that. Yeah, that's, that's how the Sulu Nation got started. Mm-hmm. That's 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 some that's some incredible history right there, and uh, and that's that's crazy. I had no idea he w he was the one that uh, invited you to to come out to New York, and and since you were there, um, you also got to connect with with some of the other MCs. What was that like? Even just uh, you know being a part of of the buzz of of hip hop when it was like really just uh, starting out there and forming in New York. It was great because I, I I met um, I met Guru and Premier. When I had to perform in New York, I performed in New York at uh, at a new music seminar, and they 
they also had a showcase because they just came out with um with manifest so that's that's where i met them and through them i met a lot of other people i i i i, I met like ice t and chuck d before that but i met them when they came to um when they came to amsterdam oh, okay but a lot of the other artists like um guru premier and of course jay roe and um Big Sugar, all, all those people from the Gangsta Foundation, and I met them in New York. People like Big Daddy Kane, I met them uh, like when they came out to perform here in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And what's that like? Uh, the difference, you know, I'm sure you've had the chance to hit stages in both places. Uh, what what would you say is like the difference in the hip hop community in uh, in Amsterdam versus being in New York? You talk about back then or now? Um, yeah, well, maybe both, yeah. Do back then and now. <laughs> I think back then, the, the it was basically the same. Okay. The, I mean, people in New York, they really were into that hardcore grimy shit. I mean, even, even when you went to clubs like, uh, you ever heard of the Tunnel? Yes, of course. And yeah. they just did that uh, the track in dedication to it on uh, Onyx's last album. Oh, like, okay, cool, yeah, cool, cool. Onyx and Papoose, and I think Cormega's on that too. It's the track's called The Tunnel. It's really dope. Yeah, so it's really changed throughout those years because back then I'm talking about like the late '80s and uh, '90s. Yeah, clubs like The Tunnel, Mars, uh, Speed, and they were just really playing just like that hardcore hip hop shit. Mm -hmm. After a while, it started to change when you know when the whole bad boy era started to come up and started to become more flashy. And it's still it's still like that in New York till this day. I mean, the states till this day. And in Europe, they also like they, they also like you know like the uh, the popular artists like you know Two Chains, Rick Ross, Drakes, and all this type of artists. But they still love that hardcore shit, especially Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. That's why you still got groups like Onyx and J. Wu the Damager. They 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 perform there all the time. So I think that that to me is like the biggest difference when I when I look at the time frame when I'm talking about this time frame right now. It's more, especially Eastern Europe, they're more into that hardcore hip hop shit. Maybe it also has to do with their environment because Eastern Europe is no joke. <laughs> no joke. Have you been to some of the places out there? Yeah, I performed in um, Slovenia. There was it was part of Yugoslavia before the war. And if you ever been to Eastern Europe, it's everything's like gray. <laughs> you know, the buildings are gray. And the, uh, the 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 atmosphere, everything is gray. It's, it's like a real hardcore environment. So that's why i can understand that they love the hardcore shit because the music reflects their environment it reflects their lifestyle mm -hmm, for sure western europe is more you know people got it much better than, so they also like the flashy shit <laughs> uh, i'm sorry the flashy uh music that's funny and, and there's probably a little bit more color over there just like brightness and stuff and on on the western side it's interesting because i was talking to somebody today about you know how canada how much that affects our music and our moods and stuff the fact that we have these long winters here like it's it's cold outside right now and and being out in amsterdam was amazing because it, it wasn't really that cold it maybe rained a couple of days but it was sun shining for the other parts and like it's it's a very co colorful place there but when you get into canada like all you're seeing is white for a good four to five months and how much that like really affects the people and puts them in more of like uh, more like just l down and depressed moods and stuff like that people like a lot of people here don't enjoy the the snow and it's interesting to see how that actually affects the music that we make you know yeah because that's the biggest difference that i noticed when when i went to eastern europe and that's what that's the reason why i mean groups like onyx just to name a few just to name one um they don't get that many shows in uh in the states no more but they don't have no problem getting shows in uh in Poland or Czech Republic or Bulgaria or Macedonia because they really love the hardcore, the, the, the hardcore music. They don't really care if the artist is in the charts or not. And 
and, and you know the the internet has been a great help mm-hmm. because now they had a ch- now they, now they have a chance to discover all those artists. Yeah, that's right. And and once they kind of get a ch- attached to a certain type of sound, something that that you know resonates with their environment, as you're saying, they you know they'll they'll be down to support it and stick with it. Oh yeah, definitely. That's why the the biggest hip, the biggest hip hop festival in uh, in Europe is in Czech Republic. What's that one called? Uh, camp. Camp. Hip hop camp. Camp. Yeah, yeah camp. And uh, the second biggest is uh, I think Splash in Germany. Okay. And when you talk about camp, that's I think it's like sixty thousand people, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I remember last year. I think Onyx was on it on that uh, that festival last year. Yeah, and, and they brought the funny, snack. The, the, the funny thing is you're talking about like almost close to like fifty, sixty thousand people and no X uh no commercial X. That's a beautiful thing. So that's you know, that's that says a lot about um about Eastern Europe and how they um how they approach hip hop. That's cool. I like it. See, my my kind of music, and I was showing you with that Primo CD. It's that kind of like more raw underground type sound, more rugged. And I just uh, I feel like I need to be out there more. <laughs> Europe Europe seems more like uh, like home to me now. Oh, you definitely do. Especially like like I said before, folks in Eastern Europe, countries like Croatia, uh, Serbia, Poland, Macedonia, Bulgaria. Got the folks in Eastern Europe because that market keeps growing and like and they love the type of music that that you are making. Well, the music that I heard on the seat on on your uh, it's called Primo CD, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, it, it was cool for me because I'm like I'm a huge fan of of, of Premier and uh, and the and the music that he makes. That's obviously why I put out that uh, that CD with all of his beats on it. And uh, he's he's always been somebody that I've looked up to, and same with Guru, just in the in the kind of music that he was making, where it's like message music, you know what I mean? Where there's they're, they're actually saying something in in the music, and I noticed that with yours as well, that uh, that lemonade track and stuff, like it just you've got a pause. There's a message there, you know what I mean? You're you're trying to to really uplift people in a positive way with a song like that, and I uh, I I gotta commend you for that, man. Thank you, but. Like I said, but I don't have a problem with uh, artists, you know, that only make uh, gangster music, <laughs> music. Because I mean, it's like uh, it's like the movie. Sometimes you're in the mood for a comedy. Sometimes you're in the mood for an action flick. Very true. Yeah, no, you can never you can never negate any of the other types of music that are made. Definitely. I, I but for myself personally, like. Just because I don't live that lifestyle, the gangster lifestyle, I'm not in the streets with the guns and the selling the drugs and stuff like that. I'm more l- apt to listen to music that uh, that reflects the kind of lifestyle that I'm living, which is u- generally that positive stuff. Because I'm trying, in some way, shape, or form, to you know create good change in the world and, and make uh, make positive things happen. That's why I kind of was. Uh, attached to the music that you were making and uh, okay. and and very impressed with it so it's it's you know it's music that i've been bumping i've been bumping it in uh you know driving it around and and walking down the streets so i'm like yes this is this is that kind of music that we like that hip hop stuff and uh just f- from listening to uh, did you ever get a chance i wanted to ask you just from listening to all these KRS one interviews that i've been listening to lately i'm trying to get an interview with him too did you ever get a chance to meet him while you're in New York? Uh, yeah, I was, um, I was, I was his opening act uh, when he came out to perform here with, um, but that's years ago. That was with uh, Boogie Down Productions. Oh, okay, that's dope. That's dope. What was that like meeting him? Um, the, the thing is with KRS, I don't have that much experience with with him, but I noticed that there are like two sides of on it. Okay. You can you can be real cool. Or you can. It's like sometimes in in uh, when when you check some of his interviews, he's always on point. Yeah. With the stuff he's talking about, but sometimes he comes across like real preachy. <laughs> and that's that's the only thing I don't like about uh, KRS. 
<laughs> that's so funny that's so funny yeah it's very very true and a lot of people have mentioned that for sure it's like he is he is preaching and he'll even mention it about himself too he'll be like he, he knows he's preaching too but uh but a, a lot of the and he doesn't need it i mean let your music speak that's he true. doesn't need it yeah, he does but, make, uh, make but i know that he, he has a lot of problems with the way hip-hop is right now and you know, it's, it's just a sign of the times. And, and people complain a lot about, um, you know, all those all those artists using auto-tune and all that stuff. And all the, all, most of the records all sounding the same. But those are not the only type of hip-hop that, that, that's out right now. It's the type of hip-hop that, 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 that gets played on Hot 97 and all those big radio stations. But, you know, do some research on the Internet. You will find a bunch of good artists. That's very true. I I, I kind of I get a, I get caught in that myself sometimes, complaining about artists using auto tune or just like making mainstream hits or the, hearing the same. Like I can't stand really listening to mainstream radio because it does sound like they're just doing the same uh, formula recycled over and over again. They're like, oh, this is what works. This is the kind of uh, tempo that it needs to be. These are the kind of instruments that need to be in there. This is the kind of subject matter it has to be about, and that's what makes a hit. And they just keep pumping out more and more and more and more but at the same time i hate complaining i don't like being that person that's always like ah this sucks i don't want to listen to this so i choose to stay away from listening to the radio and and do like what you're saying do a little bit of research and and find that good hip-hop that's out there because it's it's there and and i think there's pro like the there's more of that being made than the mainstream bubblegum stuff this, and, you know, the only problem I have with mainstream radio compared to, like, 80s, 90s is that there's no balance. Mm -hmm. Like, right, right now, it's just all the same type of records. And back then, you would hear on the same radio show, you would, you would hear Public Enemy, but also Two Life Crew, or NWA, or Ice-T, or X-Clan. So you had different types of artists with different types of subject matters, but now it's you know it's 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 business now. It's all about business. Yeah, making money. Yeah, I mean back 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 then it was a thing about money, but it was also more about the, you know the, the the passion and the love for the music. And now it's you know strictly about money, and that's why a lot of artists. Well, that's just my opinion. A lot of artists just play it safe, and when they see that one record is hitting the charts using auto-tune, they will do the same. Yeah. And now, to me, this time right now, is 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 the age of the one-hit wonders. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel mean, that. Look yeah. at artists like Bobby Smurder. They got one hit, and boom, they're gone. OT Genesis, one hit, boom, they're gone. Trinidad James, one hit, boom, they're gone. Uh, that's sad. Well, like I said, um, you just you just mentioned yourself. There are a lot of other artists you can find on the internet that will make the music that you like. So, yeah, you just gotta spend that time, do a little bit of research. Yeah, definitely. Search for that stuff, and even on on different social media accounts too. Like you can you can find new people via Instagram or or Twitter or Snapchat or any of that kind of stuff, and 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 you can you can get attached to some new music that's uh that's dope one thing i wanted to talk to you about uh because we were talking a little bit about it out in amsterdam was how big the uh the asian market is for music right now and how important it is for artists to recognize the the market that's out there for for hip-hop and for for mm. entertainment and stuff and and try and get down there and capitalize on it uh you've had a chance to go down there and and meet with people and and do shows and stuff like that uh just wanted to get a little bit of information from you on you know how to make those uh those relationships happen i know we talked about it in person but a lot of art artists and stuff listen to this show and i think the advice that you have uh could be really beneficial for them Sorry, I didn't hear the last part you said. Oh, a lot of uh, a lot of artists listen to the show, and I just feel like the advice that you have could be really beneficial to them. So, just anything that you could say on that topic, as far as uh, Japan. oh yeah, when when it, when it comes to Asia, well, Asian when markets, it comes yeah. to hip hop and Asia, like um, Japan has always been a big market, Taiwan and South Korea, but right now uh, China is coming up. 
and the reason why it's like China's only opened up like maybe like 20 years ago. So a lot of uh, a lot of people out there are really dis discovering a lot of music that we we were already accustomed to. Um, that's that's why they it, it, it's it's almost like a race because China and Japan they don't mix. China and, and J China and Japan. Yeah, they don't mix. The people don't mix, whether it's on the political or personal. They just don't mix. So uh, China always looks at Japan like competition. Okay. So they try to do everything better than the uh, Japanese. So uh, especially when, because uh, what I noticed about hip hop over there, they 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 really they really get into it. They 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 don't do anything like half. It's all the way. <laughs> That's good. So and uh, I noticed that like especially like the b boy, they got like real big b boy competitions over there with thousands of people just showing up, and the DJing is also. Uh, big over there and now a lot of Chinese rappers have started to come up a lot of uh, uh, some of the artists that I work with uh, some of them rap in English and others uh, in Mandarin Chinese hmm. and to make a long story short yeah the future is right the future is there because uh, next year you will have half a billion people on their age 30 in China whoa and all those people grew up on the internet. And and really, uh, like a lot of the stuff that's coming out from like the Western music side of things, right? Like as far as America. And, oh yeah, and they're, they're exposed to it. I yeah. mean, they got they got their own. Um, some people just use a VPN, you know, to get on those uh, sites because YouTube is blocked, uh, Twitter is blocked, Facebook is blocked, SoundCloud is blocked. But they have their own versions because for YouTube they have Yuku and Tudao. For Twitter they have Weibo. Facebook they use like uh, pay, uh, sites like Ran Ran. So they got their own versions. Mm -hmm. But they, they they have the same. Um, they can see, they can see and hear the same music we do. I'm sure there's a lot of people that probably make it um, part of their life, just like people do over here. To to when they hear different artists' music, they take their music, download it, and then upload it on their own YouTube channel and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So they get exposed to to just as the same content that that we're getting exposed to over here. Yeah, because when the the, the time that I was staying in China, um, I was using a VPN to get on uh, Western sites, but. It didn't always work until I discovered all those Chinese sites. So when something came out on a, on a website like Hip Hop DX, it will be on the same. It will be in China the same day on sites like Udick or uh, you had a, another hip hop site called Linsbros. So they, they have the, they have the same. They have the same. Um, how do you call it? The same access as we do. Yeah. Sometimes a little slow because, you know, it, it depends on uh, the Chinese government because they can change the rule overnight. That's so crazy. That's so crazy that they have that much control. They need to. They need to. The, the country is too big. I, I mean, if they, uh, a lot of people don't understand that it's, it's 1.3 billion people out there. If they don't have control, a lot of people just don't like it because they, you know, they, they compare it to, to their own lifestyles and their own, um, you know, their own governments. But it's too big. If, if they lose control, it will be a civil war because every state will try to gain and will try to reach for that power, will try to reach for that power spot. Huh. So that's one of the reasons. I'm not saying uh, what they do is good, but, you know, it's different culture. you got to respect it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's different. But like different. I said, they, 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 uh, those kids over there, I mean, all those kids over there, they don't care. they got their own versions. That's cool, and they can still access it. That's, that that yeah. blow, blows my mind, though, just the way that the, the government's run over there and, and, and how things are. I mean, thinking about, uh, like, North Korea and and what life is like for people there um i it just uh like 
that that whole side of the world just blows me away. I need to at but, least but get I think over North there. Korea's will, you know, that's extreme. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Their 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 government just controls everything. Because the, the 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 first time I went to China, I was surprised about. Um, I expected to see a lot of military on the streets because that's what you get. That's that's what they show you on TV. Mm -hmm. When they show you images of China, it's always you know government, communism, militaries. I didn't see none of that. I was really surprised that all those that, that a lot of people were smoking weed. <laughs> They were smoking weed on the street. They were smoking weed in the clubs. I was walking on the street. Everyone was offering me, offer, offering me hash. Wow, I did not, I did not expect that one coming from China. I gotta say, neither, neither did I. And, and that's why, you know, sometimes you you really need to visit those countries to see what they are like. Because mm -hmm. I mean, a, a city like Shanghai, that's it's like New York on steroids. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've heard that. I've heard that uh, that it's a little crazy there. Yeah, it is, and that's that's why I try to tell artists like you know focus on Asia, Eastern Europe, and Asia, because uh, a lot of people try to focus too much on the states, and in the states it's it's, it's an overkill. Yeah, there's I probably mean, so much. Especially people. in the states, you, you you got more you got more rappers than fans. <laughs> yep. That's so true. That's so true. Go go to the places where there's fans and and that, yeah, a lot that of people, be... you know, they 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 forget, they they forget about all those other markets and don't forget about Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Place like that. That's big. That's big. What are the people like uh, in in China? Just like as far as um, just interacting with them and stuff. That was the one thing that I noticed was really different when I was in Amsterdam and the Netherlands in comparison to here. Like everybody says that people in Canada are nice and like we're polite and all that kind of stuff. But when I was out there in in Amsterdam and the Netherlands, I experienced a whole different kind of nice like a really big open arms approach to everybody that we met every everybody that we ran into seemed to be friendly and nice like i didn't meet one person that was like mean or or negative in any way maybe it was just mm -hmm. good people that we ran into but like it just seemed the even just the random people that were on the street that came up to us like everybody seemed uh really really nice and friendly there and i don't know if have we just got lucky or if that's really just how it is there like what do you think the difference is in oh, comparison yeah, to people, people that, are, that yeah. are not nice of course but um don't forget like the, the netherlands is a real small country mm -hmm. so the, the whole mentality is different i mean you only got like 17 million people living in this whole country yeah i mean a, a city like paris already has like 12 million that's so, because uh, when, when you go to France, people are way different over there. Yeah, I've heard it's not not very it's not a nice place to go. We we ran into some people that went to to Paris to get to engaged on uh, when we were on our way back. Uh, we just ran into them there talking about it and said that it was like the worst experience they ever had. You know, it's like the the, the bigger the country, the bigger the city, the more distant the people are. Yeah, uh, you know, like Netherlands is a real small country, so a lot of people over here they're more, they're more laid back, you know, real cool. But uh, China, yeah, China is a different story because um, you got a lot of foreigners out there now, especially like Shanghai. You got like two million expats living in that city. So especially Shanghai, they used to foreigners, but also went to other cities like Hangzhou and Nanjing. And you don't see that many foreigners over there. So over there, you will, you know, people will look at you like you're an alien. They're still nice, but it's it's it's, it's a different story. You, you got to get used to people just staring at you. Or, I mean, like for example, I was in a restaurant and just eating, and um, two Chinese guys just came. You know they came. They they sat on my table right across, uh, right across me, and they just you know they they were just staring at me. And all of a sudden they started to uh, touch my arms and my shoulders. Like and, and and I was already prepared because I know that a lot of people are not used to seeing black people or white people. 
Mm -hmm. So it's it's still it's still a funny experience, but it, it, you know it, it it all depends on what region you're in. Yeah. Because you have certain regions in China where they've never seen a white person or a black person in real life. That would be such a trip. I can't. I can't even imagine that. And and that's that's interesting. Your story about that person coming up to you and just like, or those guys just like touching you because they're they're just like blown away. They're like, is this really real? Is this in front of me? Is this even happening? Like that would that would be such a an odd experience. It almost be yeah. Like but I mean, like alien. turn it t turn it around. Have, have have you ever seen an Eskimo? No. Me neither. I know for a fact that if, if, if both of us were on the street and we see the Eskimo pass by, hell yeah, I, I, I would ask him to, 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 you know, to take a picture. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's an extreme example, but in, in China, I mean, the, the country is so big, you've got certain regions where they never seen, where they never seen a foreigner. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's an interesting uh, country to go to, but uh, to get back to your point, yeah, especially if you're an artist like you, yeah, you, you do some research on, uh, on China and focus on uh, entire Asia that, for that matter. Because, I mean, countries like, um, it's not only China that's, that's, you know, that's growing, it's also like the, the, the smaller countries like Cambodia and Vietnam. And I mean, in Thailand, I don't know if they still do it, but for years they had like the Asian hip hop festival in uh, in Bangkok, and all the all the Asian artists from the Philippines and uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, they all performed there. The last time, uh, Nas was the headliner. Dope, dope. That's my favorite artist right there. And it's like you know, like I said, a lot of a lot of artists just you know they focus too much on uh, on the United States, and uh, you know forget about all those other countries. And that's 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 a huge market for a lot of hip hop artists, but they just tend to focus on the wrong market. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, an interview lined up for next week with uh, Maja One. She's an artist. Um, I think originally born in in canada but like i think her parents are are asian and uh and she's she's living out there now in southeast asia and just like she she was telling me the other day she's just like yeah it's a completely different world for music over there like uh there's so many more people <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's 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 just inevitably a, a bigger and better market to be in yeah because i mean like shanghai is like 23 million people and that's that's not even the biggest city that's so mind-boggling. I mean, yeah, there's 35 yeah, million yeah. in Canada alone, just in our country. There's 35 million people. Yeah, so. and you got a lot of cities. You got a lot of cities in China that people never heard of. I mean, like uh, people know about Shanghai, people know about Beijing, but you also got a city called Chongqing, and that city has 30 million people. <laughs> and you, got, you got a bunch of those cities that people don't know about uh, with that many people. That's crazy. That's so crazy. You, you, I mean, you can do a tour in one city. <laughs> that's so mind-boggling that's that doesn't even make sense to me how how big would the would the city be like across like driving from one end to the other like that uh what how do you pronounce that again Chongqing. Chongqing. um i've never been to that city I, I i've been to shanghai there's 23 million people i've been to hangzhou that's like seven or eight million nanjing also like eight or nine million so yeah, yeah, you no, know, it's like hours to go from one side to another. I mean, most people, you got you got people that that, that were born in Shanghai but never been to the other side of Shanghai. Because I mean, those cities are like countries. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy to even think about. Because I know in Toronto, I think like the the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, is like uh, three to five million population. And like I, I consider that like huge. We th like we're just like yeah, that's our big big city in in Canada, right? And and to think that, wow, they have t cities with thirty million people in China. That just that I, I can't even. That's that's like that's like me being on Earth and taking a footstep walk on the moon. That's how strange it is to me. Yeah, that's why that's what I'm saying. Whenever you got a chance to just visit China, do it and see it for yourself. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that happen. It's it's in my it's in my brain now. You're every like I just when you talked to me about it last time, I was like I was kind of feeling the urge to go, and now after this, it's like okay, hey, you, you lit a fire under me. I really I think I need to go like for sure. <laughs> yeah, the future. Like I said, the future's there. That's 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 cool. That's cool that that you recognize that uh, somebody that you know has has been in the industry for for as long as you have and and seen what you've you've seen to to know that that's this place to go. I'm gonna go check yeah, it out. But Premier's on that side right now. He just he just performed in uh, he did he did a few shows in Japan and um, he's in Thailand right now. That's crazy. That's dope. What's the scene like there? Do you know in Thailand? The hip hop scene is big, and that's like I said, they, they, um, the Asian hip hop festival is always always being held in uh, in Thailand. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's cool. I'm probably like you were saying, lots of lots of break dancers and stuff like that around there. Yeah, but also uh, MCs. Yeah, a lot of MCs. I mean, like, um, I never I never liked his name, but uh, it, was, it was a guy called MC Hot Dog. Okay. And he's from uh, Taiwan. He, he's he's been making hip hop music since the nineties. I'm gonna have to check him out because I remember you were bringing him up when we were out there. MC Hot Dog. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, he got a funny name, but um, he's 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 one of the pioneers. He he's been doing it since like the nineties. And he also got a guy called Gary Wang. And he's like one of the hip hop pioneers from China. And he had like a DJ school and doing all those parties, uh, also since the early 90s. And uh, he also, I, I don't know if they still have it, but they also have like the Iron Mike. The Iron Mike's like a, like a battle, like an MC battle going through, throughout China. And they've been doing it for like 10, 15 years. That's dope. That's dope. I had no idea. Iron Mike. I yeah, but they, 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 don't, they don't get, you know, they, they don't get that much exposure. They don't get playing on the radio or nothing, but because um, most radios are state-owned and they only play love songs. <laughs> and that's because the government is pushing that because they, you know, they want to... Family life is important in uh, in China. Yeah. So on the state on the state radio you will only hear love songs, but you also have a lot of digital radio stations. There's a radio station called You Dance, You Dance CN, uh, You Dance CN dot com, and that's like a digital radio station in Shanghai, and they also have like a, a lot of hip hop shows that you can check out. That's cool. That's good that they have that. That's that's interesting though. Just your comment about the having the love songs on the radio. I wonder really, honestly, how much the music that's being played on mainstream radio affects the the people and how they act well it seems to work in china yeah cuz like uh family life's really important i mean uh people are e- even um you know like taking care of your parents taking care of your gran- grandparents there's there's even a rule in china that you need to visit your grandparents I don't know if the rules still there because you know, like I said, they changed rules overnight. But they had they had like a law that you had to visit your grandparents. That's that's a good law. That's a good law to have. I think. I think I need to go and see my grandma and my my oma more often for sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. But you know, that's um, it's 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 tradition. So on 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 the state radio, yeah, you will hear love songs. <laughs> That's interesting, because over here, like, a lot more party-party songs, you know? <laughs> it's the Western world, because they, they don't allow, uh, like, nudity or any violent content or any political content. You will, you will get blocked. Huh. So that, do they have, like, there's got to be, like, crazy political rappers, though, that, like, Asian political rappers that are just, like, super oppressed and mad at the system, though, right? MC Hot Dog was one one of the few, and yeah, yeah uh, I forgot his name. He had another one in China, but um, yeah, but that's that's but that's really underground. Cause as soon as they uh, as soon as the government finds out about the content, you know, you won't be able to perform anywhere. Huh. Wow. 
that's so crazy how they could have that kind of stronghold. <laughs> like, you can't say anything bad about our government or you're not going to perform for the rest of your career. Yeah, they want to keep their control. Wow. So, you know, you just you just got to watch what you say. Mm-hmm. But it, all, it, it depends if you're above the radar or under the radar. I mean, if you're under the radar, they're not going to find out. Yeah. Got to got to do that that uh, grassroots political uprising movement there in China. But like I said, it, 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 it's it's just uh, you know you, you never know what to expect. Cause I mean, the act like public enemy. They performed in China. Yeah, they're they're pretty political. <laughs> they yeah. like fight the man and stand up for your rights. So I think I think I think they were lucky. Cause I mean, um, Beyonce, uh, Jay Z wasn't allowed to come into China. Snoop wasn't allowed to come into China. Wow. Because what they do is, if you, if you, uh, like I said, you, you can perform above the radar or under the radar. Because I mean, like people like Jay Ru, they would the damage he performed in China. Onyx, Royce the Five Nine, he performed in Beijing. But that was like under the radar. If you're above the radar, you know, like artists like Jay Z or Rick Ross or whatever, or Snoop. You have to go through the government first, and they have a division where they will check all your lyrics. Wow. Before they allow you to perform in China. Wow. I couldn't and imagine that. Imagine that if that was, if it was like that in Amsterdam or the Netherlands, and, and they had to, like, check check on the artist's lyrics before they could come into the country and perform. Yeah, but like I said, and the Netherlands is an extreme example, because, I mean, look, I mean even, even in Canada, because you, you just told me I can't curse on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, we have C- CRTC <laughs> rules states that... Yeah, no, yeah, I, I understand, sucks. but it's not a problem over here. In the Netherlands, you can curse as much as you want. Really? Yeah. What? All day long, no matter what? I don't know if you want to do it all day long, but they don't care. <laughs> I mean, you've, you're, you're, you're allowed to curse if you want. Wow, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I wish I wish I didn't have any any censorship at all on this show. It's the one thing. No, that but I, I understand. I mean, the states is the same thing. But uh, like I said, in the Netherlands, it's no problem. Yeah, that that's that's I don't know. The Netherlands is is a completely different type of uh, world out there, especially with the the legalization of of certain drugs and stuff like that. The 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 fact that you can walk down the street and smoke weed and not have any any issues. That's you know. Yeah, but I, don't don't underestimate those laws because the thing is, like you're you're allowed to smoke weed on the street, you're allowed to buy weed in the coffee shops, but the coffee shops are not allowed to grow it. Yeah, I had a, a conversation with a guy in one of the co- coffee shops. He was basically like the middleman distributor person who, like, he said that the coffee shops can't grow it. They can't actually buy it themselves, and nobody affiliated with the actual coffee shop can either. Yeah. Not like a family member of them or a friend of them. So it has to be this completely other person, this third-party person that goes and meets with the growers and mm-hmm. and stuff, buys the product, and then and then distributes distributes it to the to the coffee shops mm-hmm. I, I thought that was crazy and and there's like certain limits on like how much you can carry how much you can have in the store like even i think you said there's yeah. like you can only have 500 grams in the store and if you have like f- like 400 up front and then like another 200 in the in a back storage or something like that you can get completely shut down and then they've got like certain restrictions that just came in place as far as schools he said there's like if you're like a he said like 15 or 20 shops got shut down because yeah because they, they were within a certain distance of school. schools yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's yeah like i said the netherlands is kind of strange when it comes to those type of laws because you know it's crazy but you know the police don't they don't really check it because i mean if they really wanted to check it all they have to do is just stand in the coffee shop in, in like early in the morning or late at night and just watch some people get in with some bags mm-hmm so they don't really do that, but you know, it's officially that's the law. Yeah. What What's it like uh, as far as? Because when we were there, it kind of tripped us out when we walked out of the train station. There's a sign that says three tourists just died." Basically, like, be careful. And and I think they said it. it they died. Yeah, of, it was of coke. because some dealers were selling um, bad coke. Uh, yeah, they were selling white heroin. Oh, whoa! Okay. 
they were they were saying it was coke, coke. but it was uh, white heroin so some people died <laughs> wow does that does that kind of thing happen often out there or is that was that kind of a freak incident with the white heroin no the, the, i think i think it's the first time but you know a lot of people don't care it's about money so they don't care mhm and, it's, and and it also happened during the Amsterdam dance event, and that's you know like that's like one of the biggest um, dance events in the world. Well, where you know all the people from the entire EDM industry they all come together. So you know it was like Disney Disneyland for all those dealers. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, that's too bad that uh, that that that's what it was. Wow. White you know, that's there's, there's just the, the other side of, you know, everything being uh, real, everything being available in Amsterdam. A lot of people come from other countries and they just want to go all out with no limits. Because <laughs> the, the the funny thing is, like, if, you, if you're born here in the Netherlands, like, a lot of people don't even smoke that much weed no more. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they've been smoking since they were young. It was It was always available. Yeah, it's more for the tourists, right? I mean, it, of course, you still got people, a lot of people in Netherlands that smoke it, but um, I know a lot of people that just don't smoke it that much no more, but tourists, of course, I, I can understand. I mean, if you come to Amsterdam to have a vacation, of course, you want to go all out, but a lot of people underestimate how strong the weed is over here. And a lot of people, uh, and especially when it comes to ecstasy and all that other chemical drugs, it's it's a lot of garbage on the market right now. Got to be careful. Got to be careful oh, yeah. what drugs Definitely. you're taking, people, or just say no to drugs altogether. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that should be the the the, the poignant statement that we make. No, say no to drugs, kids, or you'll end up getting some white heroin off a dealer that was supposed to be some coke or ecstasy, and then you're dead. So watch. Oh yourself. yeah, and you had a lot of tourists that think they could fly after taking mushrooms. <laughs> that happened a lot. Oh wow! Because you know you got all those smart shops. They 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 changed that. They changed that too. I think it was like last year. They they were not allowed to sell mushrooms anymore. But you could, you know, they, they were you were able to buy mushrooms in all those smart shops that you had in uh, that you have in Amsterdam. Yeah. Now now somebody was saying, or we went to a, a one of these shops. It was a truffle shop, and basically, like the only way to sell mushrooms now is inside truffles. Yeah, so you yeah, buy yeah, you yeah. buy the buy the truffle and it's got the mushrooms in it, but you don't actually get to see the mushrooms yourself. No, you like once again Amsterdam is a great city, but um, if you if you have a weakness for drugs, it can be a dangerous city to be in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, watch yourself, people. Watch yourself. But it was fun. It was a great time. the The people were awesome. The music was great. Um, getting a chance to meet you was uh, was awesome. And you know, getting a chance to do this conversation now makes it even more epic. I wanted to ask you, what do you got? To, what do you got coming out? You know, or the plans? I guess for for the future. We were talking a little bit while I was there about um, you working on some new records and stuff. Uh, if you can just share with the people a little bit about what. Your oh yeah, plans I'm are. A, right now I'm just working on some new material, but um. I'm also, uh, I will send you some stuff when it's uh, done. I'm, uh, I'm also working on a music project called The New Dutch Masters. And it's, um, it's a collective of uh, a, few, uh, a few MCs from the Netherlands who rhyme in English because a lot of artists over here, they rhyme in Dutch. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a collective I'm working on. And my own material, I'm, I, started to write, I started to write some new songs and I will definitely do a, a song with DJ Premier. But I also, um, also got to wait for him because he, he, he's, he's a busy man. Yes, yes. It will, de- it will definitely happen. So, uh, you know, I'm a patient man, so it will definitely happen. But I got to wait for him. Word up, word up. Well, looking forward to uh, to hearing some of the new music and hopefully um, oh, yeah, and, uh, get you over Simpson. here. Hmm? And Guilty Simpson. Guilty Simpson? Yeah. Bang, bang. That's so what's that's, up. Uh, I will have, uh, have some more artists that I'm working with, but uh, when it's official, I will let you know. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. And yeah, I'm gonna play some of the the tracks off this Legacy uh, CD that you sent us, and get get some of those playing this joint with Jayra the Damager uh, before we get into that interview. And 
Should be dope, man. And and definitely looking forward to connecting with you next time. Come up to Amsterdam, and if you ever get out to uh, to Canada, definitely. Yeah, well, let me know. I also want to give a shout out to Michi Me. Yes, haha. <laughs> Real cool girl. Yes, yes. Big shout outs to Dio as well for 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 making this happen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Of course, holding it down. Amsterdam to Guelph, Canada connection right here. CFRU man, much respects for taking the time to uh, to do this interview with me and uh, and share some of those yeah, stories and all that information on on China and stuff. I'm I'm sure some of these artists that are listening are are intrigued already about maybe taking the travel out there themselves. Yeah, like I said, folks in China next year, half a billion people under age thirty. That's your market right there. Boom, get smart, get with it. Deems right there. Much respects, brother. Respect. All right, take care. Peace. Peace.